Hello and welcome back to the channel! Well, I know it's been some time since I did a proper War Thunder aircraft guide, so I thought, why not do one right now? And the aircraft we are covering today really is something else. Today we take a look at the Aichi B7A Ryusei, a dive slash torpedo bomber that actually excels more in the fighter role. And with this new guide I'll also change the approach to these videos. While I normally do an extensive history part before the gameplay shenanigans, I'll try to keep the history parts shorter now, giving more of a basic overview um, of the aircraft's history so that I have more material for actual history videos, which seem to be rather popular with you guys. So then, let's take a look at arguably the best fighter bomber in the game. And of course we'll start with the short history part. But actually, there isn't really that much known about the Ryusei, mainly because of its short operational career and its rarity. If I really want to do a proper historic aircraft guide to this machine, I really need to get my hands on some uh, some sources for this aircraft, because there really isn't that much, much around. But anyways, its origins trace back to a 1941 16G specification for a combined dive and torpedo bomber. At the time, the Japanese Navy operated their dive and torpedo bombers differently, with a certain aircraft for each role. At the beginning of World War II, these were the Aichi D-3A Val in the dive bomber and the Nakajima B-5 and Kate in the torpedo and level bomber role. These were to be replaced by a newer generation of aircraft, respectively the D-4Y Judy and the B-6 and Tensan. The replacement for these types in turn was to be a single aircraft, the B-7A. Previous aircraft had been limited by the standard size of aircraft elevators in the IJEN. The new Taiho class of carriers featured bigger elevators, meaning the new aircraft could be designed bigger than its predecessors. It also had wings that didn't fold only at the wingtips, like for example the Zero or the D-3A hat, meaning that storing the aircraft in the enclosed hangars of IJEN carriers was much easier. For a first in Japanese carrier aircraft, the B-7A featured a true enclosed bomb bay that could house bombs as big as 800 kilograms. Smaller bombs could be carried under the wings as well. The aircraft was also capable of carrying a single torpedo, however this had to be carried outside of the bomb bay since the Type 91 torpedo wouldn't fit into it. The large wings were equipped with dive brakes and with a wingspan of 14.4 meters, the Ryusei was one of the largest carrier capable aircraft in the IGN's arsenal. Similarly to the F4U Corsair and the German Junkers Ju87, the B7A featured an inverted gull wing. This allowed the landing gear to be much shorter and more sturdy while st still giving the aircraft enough clearance for its large propeller. The aircraft was piloted by a crew of two, a pilot and a rear gunner who operated a 13.2mm heavy machine gun. The forward-facing armament of the B-7A was unusually heavy for a Japanese dive bomber and consisted of two Tomioka Type 99 20mm cannons with 200 rounds per gun. Compare this to the 7.7s of the previous D-4Y Judy or the D-3A. Indeed, the B-7A was on par or exceeded the performance of its American counterparts, the SB-2C Helldiver and the TBF Avenger, except for its payload, which was somewhat lower than on its American counterparts, which is, be is, is because of its uh, limited bomb base size. The aircraft was fast, with 567 km/h top speed thanks to its powerful 18-cylinder Homare engine and it had plenty of range at roughly 3000 km. Not only that, but the aircraft's low wing loading made it highly maneuverable. This has led to the aircraft sometimes being called its own escort, since with its good performance and potent armament, the aircraft was on par with the then current version of the A6M0 fighter. The prototype B7A flew already in 1942, but the aircraft was seriously delayed because of difficulties with the unreliable Homare engine. Compact and with a high power output, the Homare suffered from reliability issues and because of the small size, serving the en servicing the engine internally could be difficult. Not only that, but the engine was subsequently also rather maintenance heavy. 
Plans were also underway to re-engine the type with Mitsubishi's MK9, the Homare's rival in the Imperial Japanese Navy, but that engine never entered mass production. Similarly, the production of the B7A was equally slow. Allied bombing raids crippled the Japanese infrastructure and an earthquake destroyed the factory at which the Ryuseis were assembled in 1945. Coupled with the loss of all carriers that were able to operate the type, it's not really surprising that only 114 of these very powerful aircraft were built. Robbed of their carriers, B-7As flew missions from land bases exclusively and many were used in kamikaze raids, bringing a rather disappointing end to what was arguably the most powerful torpedo slash dive bomber in the world at that time. If it had entered service earlier, the B-7A could have made quite an impact in the Pacific War. Fast and powerful and fitted with self-sealing fuel tanks, as well as armed protection, the B-7A could take way more punishment than its flimsy predecessors. As it was, however, the aircraft was severely hampered by the delays in its production and lack of suitable carriers, meaning the B-7A never lived up to its potential. Unsurprisingly then, not a single example of the B-7A has survived to this day. Okay then, let's look at the B-7A here in game then. It sits at a battle rating of 3.7, both in air RB and AB. Um, this is the last of the single engine dive and torpedo bombers you'll get before you transition to the P1Y1, which nobody plays because, well, it sucks. And then you immediately go towards the R2Y2, which of course are infamous in this game. Um, I remember actually the uh, B7A sitting at a battle rating of 4.0 a few years back where it already was a very powerful uh, aircraft and I was being amazed when they decided to put it down to 3.7. Uh, one reason might be its payload because the payload is actually somewhat less compared to its American counterparts. You can get either the big 800kg bomb um, to 250s plus 460s or 10 60 kilogram bombs or well you can equip the torpedo which nobody does because well eh, torpedoes they suck in war thunder um yeah but anyways let's compare this to its american counterparts in the tech tree you have the uh, sb2c hell diver which sits at the same vr and as you can see this thing has more of a varied um Payload. It can equip bombs, uh, gun pods, rockets and torpedoes. And then the Americans also get the premium BTD destroyer. Which for example can equip up to two torpedoes. So the B7A at least in the payload department is a little bit behind uh, compared to its American counterparts. However it makes up uh, more for this with its performance. Um, it is a comparatively cheap aircraft to run. As you can see, 2847 lines, that's not very much. Um, the aircraft has plenty of ammunition for its 20mm cannons. As you can see, 200 rounds per gun. This allows you to engage multiple targets without really running out of ammunition. Let's also quickly take a look at the guns themselves. Uh, you can see 490 rounds per minute, that's comparatively, uh, that's a rather low rate of fire compared to other 20mm weapons you'll find on um, other aircraft of other nations. But, these are the Type 99 Mark IIs. These have a slightly higher muzzle velocity than the earlier Type 99 Mark I you'll find on, for example, the early Zeros. The muzzle velocity still really isn't the best, but once... Uh, once um, you've learned how to aim with these guns, their slow firing rate actually will allow you to conserve ammunition while still ensuing accurate fire. Not only that, but these 20mm shells, they hit pretty hard. They have a comparatively high amount of explosive filler. In terms of modifications, this really depends um, on which playstyle you want with the B7A. As a dive bomber, it obviously is a viable choice to go for the um, bomb modifications first. 
If you like me, however, and fly this thing more as a fighter bomber, the performance mods come first and then you go for the bomb mods. The B7A can be a decent ground attacker in RB as well, but its strengths, in my opinion, lie in its performance and the element of surprise this aircraft can achieve. Nobody really expects a dive bomber to really take on enemy fighters, but this aircraft certainly can so. As for the belts, um, I'd either go for the tracer belts or the stealth belts. Me personally, I like to use the uh, stealth belts on the B7A. And that's really all we can say about the B7 here in game. It of course gets one skin, which you can find on the marketplace. This one, um, which is a fictional one. Uh, to my knowledge, no B7 has ever employed this sort of color scheme. Uh, if I remember correctly, this sort of uh, camouflage was used on some of the medium bombers of the IJAF, like the uh, Key 49. I think they used this over China. But B7A is never, at least to my knowledge, never employed this sort of camo scheme. Anyways, let's see then how this aircraft behaves in the sky. Well then, now for our first battle with the B7A. And what I am doing here is basically what you should do when you're playing the B7A and start a match. Getting rid of the bombs. And I'm trying to hit some of the ground targets. I mean, I would equip the big 800 kg bomb. And because this aircraft gets an air spawn, you do have enough time to basically just uh, pick out a target, drop your bombs on it, and then change to fighter mode. This is basically how you play the B7A. Plenty of targets in view. One of the tactics you can use with the B7A is because it gets the airspawn is to go for enemy bombers. And we're following the bomb and this isn't looking too good. Well, yeah. <laughs> Well, <laughs> but yeah, uh, going for enemy bombers is a viable tactic because the B7A, despite being rubber heavy aircraft, it certainly climbs better than any other twin engine bomber. And uh, this allows you to get into a favorable, favorable position for attacks on enemy bombers as well as enemy fighters. And since enemy bombers are usually coming straight at you, um, they really don't often expect a B7A to shoot at them. And we are trying to get behind the B-18 in range, open fire and come on yep, set his engine ablaze he should be going down switch fire to the B-34 another crit another engine on fire and oh, that <laughs> that was way too close for comfort we now have two enemy bombers critted one is down and the other one should be going down as well. Oh, he seems to have put the fire out. No problem. And as you can see with the use of your air brakes, uh, making enemy aircraft overshoot or just uh, slowing down when you need to is very easy with the B7A. It basically has all the right tools for you to really fly this thing effectively as a thoroughbred fighter. Well, except the roll rate, because you, well, the B7A is a very maneuverable aircraft, but not very agile. It does not like to change very quickly from one maneuvering state into the other. But, well, that's really a minor problem if you know how to play around that. As you can see, the roll rate is not the best. And we have now four enemy aircraft down below, which means we can make diving attacks. Let's take out the Key 44 because he's a very dangerous target doesn't seem to notice us and boom there's another kill and boom and zoom it is in this moment oh holy shit what was that p51 making long range shots at us but we'll just energy trap him because we just came out of a power dive have plenty of energy to spare and now he's in a low energy state which means he's a sitting duck for our 20 millimeter weapons well, if I can roll in behind him, as you can see, this really is the killer seal of the B7A, that slow roll rate. Which means the P51 actually managed to survive, but I still have the have the better energy state, which means I can just circle around him, above him like a hawk, and then decide to make my move. 
friendly key 43 coming in. Switch target to the other key 44. Doesn't seem to notice us again. Come on. Ah, get a crit in. Again, convert that built up energy to a little bit of altitude. And the B7A with its great movability, as you can see, it can easily just loop in behind him and have another go at him. And there's another kill. We have on what, like, four kills now? Yeah, four, four kills. With a dive bomber. <laughs> I love this machine. <laughs> this really is a fantastic aircraft. P39, let's see, let's see, okay. Oh, look at that. Look how, how easy this thing slots in behind your enemy. Bam! Another kill. And this is an ace in one flight so far. And we still have plenty of shots. We have enough ammunition to get at least two more kills if we be a little bit less trigger happy. Yak 9, okay. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, another thing you that really sets the uh, B7A behind is that huge fuel load. This is actually a minimum fuel load uh, you can take. If this thing had the ability to take like 20 minutes of fuel, it would be even better. Because uh, that's of course a lot of additional weight to an already comparatively heavy single engine aircraft. But as you can see, this thing still maneuvers like a zero. <laughs> really is... An amazing aircraft in this game. I mean, you, you, you don't see that many B7As uh, in Air RB, and I have to wonder why, because this is such a fantastic machine. I mean, you, you, you're still seeing what this thing can do. This thing is, well, a, a, a better fighter, as, as a dive bomber, this thing is a better fighter than many other fighters. And a P63 inside. Let's see if we are able to get him. He does have some. Uh, Three of two of our team on his ass, so doubt he's doubt he's gonna make it. Uh, it doesn't doesn't seem we're gonna make it here in, there in time before he goes down. That J26 certainly has a drop on him. Oh, maybe. Uh, ah, okay, no. The P61 got him. Good for him. I could go for ground targets a little bit, but I don't want to waste this ammunition. I have a feeling I'm still gonna need it. So we are not gonna go ground strike mode. Which this aircraft, by the way, can do. I mean, you do, you do get... Uh, we can select two 250s and 460 kilogram bombs, so... Yeah, this might be a better better bomb load for if you want to go fly this thing in ground RB. But, well, air RB is really where this aircraft shines. And now there's a Hellcat coming in and a Yak. And I don't really want to engage these guys alone. Biggest problem is the Yak free. The Hellcat I can easily take, but the Yak is uh, fairly maneuverable as well and has a better roll rate. If he's good, he can fly some fancy maneuvers. A Hellcat, one versus one, doesn't stand much of a chance against a B7A. Which is, if you think about it, rather funny. <laughs> But the key 61 is now getting involved as well. But I am not in a favorable position. The Yak 3 seems to have the eyes on me and I want to surprise them. So, okay, this now, they are now committed. Which means we are now coming in. Let's see if we can knock out the Hellcat out of the sky. Oh yeah, oh, perfect target. And crit. Certainly something fell off from his aircraft, and he's... Oh, nobody. Yeah, there it is. Finished him off, and the Yak-3 is ma making his move. We're evading him, and look at that. Look at look at how you can throw this aircraft around. And I am now behind him, but he is playing this rather smartly. He's not committing himself to a full turning engagement with a B-7A. 
and makes use of his superior low level speed. And we are never gonna catch him. Rainbow B 7A is pretty quick for a dive bomber, but against most other fighters, it is still uh, rather slow. Turning and burning, or getting the drop on your enemy, is really where this aircraft uh, makes its kills with. Let's try to evade the P 51. And we do. He seems to be committed on the Key 61. And away he is. We are now on sitting on six kills. I mean, this is holy shit. <laughs> oh. All right, the J26. Ugh. I think he did. They go head on. Yes, they did. Oh, God. Why, seriously? Why do people commit to full head ons? I I, I still don't get it. But it was a this, but I'm low on ammunition and I am returning to base. Let's stock up on 20mm shells. Well, this will take some time. But, well. Well, let's skip ahead. And we've actually won this. Couldn't refuel in time to finish any other enemy aircraft off, but well, we finished this match with six air to air kills. Well, this is certainly a great result. Let's see those results. Let's see how, ma how many lines we can get out of this match. Loading, loading, come on. Six kills, top of the leaderboard. Uh, well, that's that's okay. That's. Meh. Still, I mean, I'm playing this for the fun, not for the Lions, so, yeah, six kills. What an amazing first match with the B7A. And for our next match here, we're employing the basically the same tactic as before, circling around and then picking our targets. I've already gotten rid of my bomb, and I'm not preparing myself for making a dive on that BF-110. And I'm coming in very fast, so thank God for those dive breaks. And reposition and slot in behind. He doesn't even notice me. Perfect target. And as quickly as that, he's gone. Kill number one, plenty of energy left and a bunch of IL-2s ahead. Which means we are switching targets to them. Check our six. We are clear. And clear to engage. Our cable of the R2 has gone down. Let's see if we can get the kill on the second one. Coming a little bit fast, a little bit fast, which means our B7A is a little bit more sluggish to react. Again, very maneuverable, but does not like to change uh, from one maneuvering state to the other. No problem. Looping around. We have another go. But he just doesn't. Whoa, that was close. Just doesn't want to go down. Again, taking it to the vertical, bleeding our energy, so that we can stay on that aisle too. Come on, this is the shot. Yes, there it is. Kill number two took way longer than it needed to be, but a kill's a kill. ME410 coming in hot. He is... Oh, oh shit, yeah, he's definitely... Uh, Coming to that head on. I think that's one of the 50 mil. I did see a big single shot coming out in front of him. Yeah, that's that's an ME410 of the 50 mil. Need to be careful about that. And now there's some uh, some of his friends coming in. Uh, don't really like the side of that. Let's distance ourselves a little bit and then re-engage. We are now not in the best position. I mean, the B7A li loves to dive on its targets and. Uh, not to be doved on. So, yeah. We need some distance to regain some altitude and then re engage. With that P40 on our ass, that's not gonna happen. So, fortunately, our team is there. And now, 
we can re-engage. Let's see if we can get on that P40's ass and knock him out of the sky. The ME410 is also returning. Okay, and we also need to keep an eye out for that, for that Typhoon on the left. Let's see if we can get the ME410. Uh, again, missed my shot. And, uh, okay, now I need to be careful not to get shot by his... Ah, good hit. Yes, and there it is. He's on fire. He should be going down. Oh, and there's the P40! <laughs> <laughs> oh, how to turntables! <laughs> That's a double kill right there. <laughs> now, however, we are pretty damn low on ammunition. I think it's time to head back to base. And uh, okay, we might need to help that P36 out. He has the typhoon on his ass. Yeah, I know that's tried. I mean, I'm, we, we are very close to our base. If if things go south, we can always uh, get to try RIA to shoot that typhoon down. But I let's see if I can get to kill on him as well. Okay, he certainly has noticed me. Nah, don't commit to the head-on. And let's. Uh, oh no, 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 no! Ah, my aircraft is damaged. Damn, I shouldn't have engaged him in that dogfight. Okay, now. Yeah, that thing is fast. Yeah, I've... let's see if if Flak can save our ass here. Let's fly it defensively, throw off his shots. Come on, oh, looking good so far. Uh, and oh, he crashed. Ha! <laughs> good. Oh, they're coming in hot. Come on, dive brakes, dive break, and slow this big big ass bird down. And we have rearmed and are on a bombing run. Already opened the bomb bay. Okay, let's see. There's a fucker wolf ahead. And the plan is to just drop my bombs on one of the pillbox positions and then make a beeline for that fucker wolf. Gonna view, come on, light up the target, and bomb is away. Looking, looking pretty good, come on. And almost dead center, that should give us, yep, two kills. And let's focus on that fucker wolf, which seems to be engaged uh, with our teammate in a low level, low speed dogfight, which is something you should never do with a fucker wolf for 90, because that thing turns like a brick. But that's good for us, which means we can slot in behind him. Another shot, come on, and there it is. Kill number five. <laughs> Saved our teammate there. Although it was he was up against a fuck wolf. I mean, in a low level, low level, low speed dogfight. I mean, a fuck wolf will lose to basically anything. So he probably could have handled that on, a, on his own. But we now have five kills under our belt. That's an ace already. Let's see if we can make it some more. Mm mm mm. Oh, good. Very good. Three targets inbound. And they are engaging our teammate again. So, they are certainly committed, which means we... Oh, no. He, the Spitfire, is going for a head-on. Let's see if we might be... Uh, okay, no, we are not able to energy trap him. That's an early Spitfire. They have terrible energy retention, but... Still... Let's just dive away from him and instead focus on the MB-175T, which seems to be on an attack run. Oh, crit him immediately. Come on, come on, come on. And he's dead. That's six kills. Great. 
Okay, Spitfire. Uh, oops. Yep, I certainly pressed the wrong button there. And we now seem to have lost some flaps. Uh, oops. Uh, damn it. Ah. Who needs flaps? Let's swing back around. Aisle 4 coming in. Let's see if I can intercept him. We do have plenty of ammunition. Come on. There's a hit. There's a crit. Ah, sadly no fire. Let's finish this guy off. Ooh. No, okay, no. No, no, no. He's putting some accurate fire into me. Let's instead focus on that spit fire. He's in the dark part of a key 44. Yeah, key 44 isn't looking too clever here. Let's see if I can help this guy out. Yeah, he's already... Probably has an oil leak. Ah, damn it. Again, miss my shot. Fuck it, let, let's just... Let's just commit to the dogfight. I need to help my teammate out here. And this, yeah, these early Spitfires are not very fast. I mean, I can catch up to them. Especially if he's maneuvering like that. Just come on, Key 44. Hold on for a little bit longer. I'm almost there. Come on. Oh, the Key 44 is perfectly baiting him for me. Oh, look at that. Look, come on. Let, yeah, commit to... Yes, he's committing to the turn. Perfect deflection shot and boom! On fire. That should be the end of the Spitfire. Oh, look at that. He still tried to ram the Key 44. <laughs> it's like a reverse kamikaze. <laughs> Ah, so only the IL-4 left, but I am on, again, low on ammunition, I need to make it back to base, and then if I can re-engage, might be able to make this 8 kills, which would be a new record for me, with any aircraft. I mean, I've, I've gotten 7 kills with several aircraft, but never 8. That would certainly be a new record. I really, uh, I hope I can shoot this guy down. Well then, let's, let's first head back to base. And here we are, slowing down, preparing for another landing. Touch. Oh. Ah, damn it. Well, didn't get the kill in the IL 4, but we got the win, and I mean, 7 kills with a dive bomber. Well, that's certainly a sight to be old. <laughs> 7 freaking kills, I mean, yeah, this, this thing is really much more of a fighter than a dive bomber. <laughs> Oh, what an amazing match. <laughs> Look at those results. I mean, that's insane. But that's got to show how... <laughs> what a spectacular aircraft the B-7A can be. Nobody expects a dive bomb to be this good, but the B-7A... I mean, this thing can certainly punch above its weight. And it is already a very heavy aircraft. So, yeah, this really is... One hell of a machine.